Hello and welcome to the How to Move Your Body Yoga program. My name is Brenton and today we're gonna get into spinal rotation and do a short practice to introduce all the different sections of our spine to rotating in all the ways that they can go. So when you're ready, make sure you're wearing something comfortable and let's go ahead and get started at the top of the yoga mat where we'll first want to start exploring some spinal movement, but in order to explore some spinal movement, we need to be sort of deliberate with how we're placing everything. So if you place your feet just generally in a position that feels good is fine, and you can just kind of start to rock forward and backward on your feet, or do anything else to kind of wake your feet up if you have some like feet waking up type of things that you know how to do so that then you can sort of deliberately set your feet on the ground. You can have them take up you know, space. I, I set my heel, lift the foot, and stretch the foot forward. And then weighting the feet evenly from front to back and left to right, we can sort of bounce the knees a little bit and just kind of start to feel like the pelvis settle evenly, then the, the knees and the ankles settle evenly. So now they can work more together as opposed to like this weird, like, ooh, they're just trying to figure out what to do. And then from here, maybe sliding a bend down into the knees and starting now to move through the pelvis, the ribs and the spine. And you could start with just some simple flexion and extension, just trying to feel the pelvis the front of the pelvis, which you can kind of monitor by the frontal hip bones on the front, the back of the pelvis, which you can monitor with the, the sacrum. It's like kind of like this triangular bone that ends the low back and it kind of, it provides the space where the pelvis attaches to it at the SI joint. And start to feel now the different vertebra in the spine and the rib cage. And if it feels good to fold forward here, you can. If you like to rest your hands on the floor, that's fine. If you wanna be more propped up on your legs or even like kind of fold your upper body over the, the edge of a sofa or something like that, that might be, feel nice. But now just kind of giving the spine a little bit of time with gravity. You can walk the weight, rock, uh, rock the weight forward and backward on the feet. And each in our own time, we can roll all the way on up to stand. Where now, hopefully we feel like the brain has a better understanding of the different parts of our body and how to maneuver them. That we can get the legs to be straight but not jammed in any of their joints. We can get the pelvis to be in an upright neutral position. The rib cage to be in a neutral position and the head to draw up and back over the shoulders. And then we'll start working full range of spinal motion, doing it in segmented pieces, since we know that the spine is built in four distinct sections and they are built differently, they're structured differently, and they have different movement capabilities. So we wanna be able to explore, make sure that each section of the spine can do the work that it is theoretically possible for it to do. So with that said, go ahead and uh, kind of stabilize yourself all the way up to the shoulders. So that includes like legs are strong, they're helping to hold your pelvis still, ribs are nice and neutral. And then from here, we're just moving through the neck. And so the neck stops at the upper back. If you like just take your head forward like you're texting, find the, that knobby point, that's where the neck stops. So we want pretty much from that point down to be unaffected by this next bit of movement. And so from here, what we're gonna do is just turn the nose toward the upper corner of the mat, keep the chin tucked in. And so now we're in a little bit of rotation, okay? And so now from the rotation, we're gonna move towards flexion. So we're gonna start to roll the chin down through center. And then from flexion, rotation to the other side. So the nose toward the upper right corner. And now we're gonna turn from rotation into a lateral flexion. So bending over the side. So we're just gonna kind of open the face. We're gonna see like the neck, it's a cylinder. 
We're not trying to extend here. So keep your chin drawing in. And so we're just trying to say like, okay, I don't want to be in a back bend in my neck. And I also don't want to be with my head forward. So I got to keep my head over the shoulder, but the chin in. And then we want to control the weight all the way back. Don't let your pelvis move. Don't let your ribs move. Keep a lifting kind of energy through the back and then side bend over to the left. And from the side bend over to the left, it's rotation down to the left. And we'll just trade sides from here. So again, just side bending over to the left and feeling again the neck kind of like a slinky, like lifting up and over, but it's open on all sides. And then rolling to the back, trying to stay nice and lifted through that entire mid back as we go over to the right side bend and rotate so the nose is turning down but the chin still turning down the head is still back over the shoulders and then rolling the chin down through center taking the chin up just kind of seeing how the neck feels after all of that now we can start to do the same thing for the mid spine. So that's again, we're at that knobby point. That's where it starts. It ends about down here where, where is it? This buddy down here where my last rib is. There's 12 of those guys. Those are the most like stuck. Those are the hardest to move just based on the way that they're structured. So as we start to move here, we're wa wanting to kind of keep this low back from here down out of it, okay? And so we're just trying to move around that sort of boundary that we create, if that makes sense. And if you even want to try this, like what I'm doing right now, it feels kind of good. You can just kind of take your hands back and be like, okay, what would it be like to hold that part of my body still and let everything else kind of mobilize around it? Okay, so we're, we'll do it a little bit more formally now and a little bit more control, but that feels good. It just kind of gets the brain used to understanding like, hey, what's going on? This is what's going on. Go ahead and take your hands in front of you, but not to the point that you're doing this. Okay, so we start in neutral, backs in neutral. And then from here, again, we're gonna uh, uh, keep your shoulders set. You know, we haven't learned about shoulders yet, but oh buddy, we will. Um, <laughs> keep your shoulders set in neutral and then we're going to simply turn from the ribs to take the heart over towards the upper left corner of the mat so same thing that we did with the neck we can now start to roll the chest forward so that the mid back is in flexion and then we'll start to rotate over to the right from the left ribs try to not move from your shoulder blades or from your arms and now the whole rib cage starts to peel open into a side bend, lateral bend over the right side of the pelvis. Try to feel both sides of your ribs. Just try to feel it. Try to feel your pelvis, your feet. And now we're going to extend back over the back of the pelvis, but keep your low back out of the movement. That's the trick. And then over the left side of the pelvis, and then we'll rotate down to the left again and we'll go right back the other way so we're going to peel the chest open and the whole rib cage open so trying to feel the whole rib cage like a teapot lifting up and over and then going over the back of the pelvis but keep the low back out of it keep the low back out of it and then over the right side of the pelvis like the teapot and then rotating down to the right and forward and just coming on up out of that shake it out just kind of feel your spine here maybe now a little bit more space through all those ribs that's so nice and then from here what we'll do is we'll rotate the spine in its sections so to rotate the spine in its sections Let's go ahead, find neutral again. Neutral again. 
And so really imagine what, what can sometimes happen with rotation is that we combine flexion or extension with the rotation. And so what we're positing today or like the experiment is like, what if I imagine that my spine was on a flagpole, like that's an axis, like a vertical axis that it's on. It waves around it because my spine is wavy, but for the most part, like it can sit on this vertical axis. And so when I'm twisting, can I respect that vertical axis? access and literally just twist pieces around it rather than having all the sections of my spine kind of pull off access this way, that way, this way, that way. So we're going to test it here. When you find neutral, keep your chin down. Our chin is really used to being like in constant, like the neck is used to being constant extension. This is kind of how we live our lives. So it will take some effort to sort of bring the chin down, get the neck into its neutral position, and then keeping the ears evenly lifting from the shoulders, starting to turn the head over to the right. And as you turn, try not to turn anything else. So just your chin, your chin's in. I can feel how it wants to like pull weirdly on my shoulders or my upper back or something. So the chin's in, the ears evenly lifted, and I see, did I kind of budge off the flagpole? Get back on your flagpole and really see, without stress, without pain, max it out, max out the rotation. And now same thing for now the spine in the middle where the ribs are. Can I respect it being on this vertical axis? And can I freeze everything down below it? And I'll add the ribs into the twist. And so now the neck is twisting and I go back to the neck and it's like, hey, necky, are you still good? Hey, uh, chest, shoulder, are you still open? And then ribs. And then pressing down with the feet, we can now add the pelvis. So now the pelvis even starts to rotate, even the hips will start to rotate a little bit to get this to happen. But am I still respecting my flag poles? One question. Are my ears evenly lifting from my shoulders? Are my armpits evenly lifting from my pelvis? And then are my feet both pressing down on the ground? And then can I get anything more from the neck, from the ribs, <laughs> or from the pelvis? Okay, what if we unroll in stages? So from this stage, what if I unroll the pelvis first but keep the ribs? Now what if I keep the neck but unwrap the ribs? And now what if I take the chin forward? Breathe out, shake out, be loose like a little gummy. But do you feel how great this feels? <laughs> Let's do the other side. Okay, so first we find neutral and we, it's a position that we're like, yes, I'm gonna dedicate my efforts towards maintaining you because I know that it makes me feel good when I do that. So if I can get neutral for my pelvis, neutral for my ribs, neutral for my head as best as I can, even if it takes a little bit of muscular support and you, so you could always you know, tap out, take a break, come back in. Now I'm starting to feel that flagpole. So it's like, okay, ears evenly lifting from the shoulders. Can I turn my chin over to the left? Keep the chin down though, so I'm not extending the neck while I'm rotating. Keep the head right over the, the chest and that'll make sure that I'm not flexing the neck as well as rotating. So I have those like little points where I can check in. I'm like, am I extending, am I flexing? And now ears evenly lifting from the shoulders. And d get max out the neck rotation without anything weird happening in the shoulders, pulling or anything like that. Keep this nice and soft. And now, can I keep that? And then can I just add, I don't think I'm exactly as upright as I could be. And now, can I add the ribs? And so now I'm working both. I'm working ears evenly up, rotating. Then I'm working armpits evenly up from the pelvis, rotating through the ribs. Chest is still open. And I'm seeing like, can I get anything more? Am I still really respecting that flagpole? And now the pelvis. 
So I eventually start to turn it all the way open to the left. And then we can unfurl from the bottom. So keep, keep the ribs and the pelvis, go, or the ribs and the neck going over to the left and just unfurl the pelvis to the right and then unfurl the ribs and then unfurl the neck. Great job. So we can shake it out again. Hopefully you're feeling pretty good here. And now let's switch gears. Let's come down to tabletop. So we can take the hands underneath the shoulders, the knees underneath the hips. And first we can sort of move around any way here that feels nice. You know, including like if you're someone who bearing weight on the wrist doesn't typically feel good, at least not without right out of the gates, you can come off the wrist and just kind of work some active flexion and extension. We'll do like a whole wrist strengthening series as well, a little in a couple of months. But then coming back to tabletop position, and seeing if we can move now like a pelvis is in neutral and we'll see if we can move the rib cage around in some circles. So just kind of targeting some movement through the parts of the spine that are just kind of historically tough spots to move and to get into. We can take that in a couple of directions. And then we can see if we want to twist from here. So this is kind of like the caveat here is like if you feel good here. So if not, then I would say like skip a couple of minutes ahead in the practice or just keep letting the video play and do one of the twists that we just did. So because from here, what we'll do is we'll see if we can hold a neutral tabletop position and float the left fingers off the ground and just take them back down. And we'll go up and down like that a few times. And the, the thing here is like, how can I get my standing body to have like no reaction between putting my hand down and lifting it up? And so then taking the left hand up, taking the hand behind the head, can I see if I can feel my pelvis and feel my spine in neutral? Are my, is my pelvis in neutral? Are my ribs in neutral? It's harder to feel down here. And from here, moving from the rib cage, opening the chest over to the left, and then coming back down. So taking that a couple of times. As you feel ready, returning that left hand to the ground, we can take, come off the wrist. So if you wanna sit back and stretch your feet, you can tuck your toes under. If you tuck your pinky toe under, the outer edge of your feet will get a really nice stretch as well. Just taking a few nice deep breaths here. Maybe it even feels good to do some wrist work. So if you take the arms in front of you and you have your chest open here, so the spine's in neutral, and if you work the wrist forward and backward or flexion and extension, hopefully by now you're starting to see flexion and extension. There's sort of like the forward backward movements that a joint can make. And then we can return to tabletop position for side two. You can always pitter patter your feet out here. I like to do that. <laughs> So in tabletop position, seeing if I can breathe easy, if I can hold everything nice and steady. And then it's playing around with, can I pick my right hand off the ground and put it back down and try to get it so that nothing kind of super weird is happening. Like, can I have my muscles hold neutral as best as I can feel it and understand it today, knowing that that's an evolving experience. And then maybe this next time, lifting the right hand 
and taking it behind the head and seeing is my pelvis in neutral, is my spine in neutral, my ribs in neutral, and then rotating from the ribs over to the right and back down. So it's much trickier to feel here, all the different components. And that's really just kind of stage one. Can I feel everything? What drops out for me at what time? After this last one, returning the hand to the floor, sitting back again. This time it might feel good to build some fists and roll the wrists around a little bit. I'm gonna go slow and try to keep my forearms really still. But you could always do like the faster version if you just kind of want to floss out your joints, you know, whatever feels good. So make sure you go in both directions. And then today we'll actually end on our backs. So when you're ready, we can come all the way down. And as we come down onto our backs, set the pelvis, the ribs, neutral with each other. Feel your spine on the floor here. And so now you have the feedback of the floor and that can also give you some information. So for most of us, our low backs are gonna feel like a little a bit of lift away from the floor. The sacrum is gonna be kind of what feels like touching the floor for most of us when the pelvis is neutral. But if you rock your pelvis forward and backward, you can see how that changes your spine. And you can see like, oh, spinal flexion, spinal extension. And so centering ourselves, at best we can feel neutral. Spine is nice and long. Head is evenly set between our shoulders. And then we can draw the legs into the belly. When we do this, see if you can do it to the point where uh, the spine is still neutral. So you haven't rolled them in all the way that the tailbone kind of flips up off the ground. So the spine is still in neutral. And see if you can access the muscles of the torso to sort of support that action. Now, if we lengthen the arms open, maybe just like a T here, we can see if we can hold the legs together. And if you actually want to hold something, you can put like a yoga block or a pillow or something between the legs to actually give yourself something to hold on to. But we're going to see if like my hips are a package. I'm not trying to move there. So as I start to lift up and over to the right, the left side of the pelvis is going to lift and I'm going to go over any amount. And then I'm going to come all the way back to center and over to the other side. So I'm trying to make this work happen, the moving part of the work, because there's work, lots of different kinds of work happening, but the moving part is happening through the torso and through the spine. I'm trying to keep my hips and my shoulders sort of the anchoring point. And it's weird because like the hips are the ones that are actually moving through space, but they're not moving in the socket at all. And so now it's just trying to feel the lower part of the spine mobilize. And you can feel like this is actually a lot of work in the hips because what we're training here is hip stability which is when the hips are trying to resist this disturbance. The spine and the torso is moving and it's trying to disturb the hip arrangement, but your hips say, no, I won't be disturbed. And in order to not be disturbed, they have to contract. So just taking that a few times, when you're ready, you can sort of Soften now, do anything you want with your legs. And then however you wanna rest, just for a couple of moments today, it's always so nice to rest and just let the nervous system process all this work. So any way you wanna rest, if you wanna lay out, if you wanna sit, if 
you want to sigh. If you're home by yourself, maybe just sigh and like let out some sound. That's nice. <sighs> so we know that the nervous system is in control of all of our movements, the movement of our thoughts, the movement of our muscles. And the first question our nervous system asks in every moment is, am I safe? So this time of Shavasana is our time to give it that input. It can read our breath. It can read sort of like how we're laying the bones, how the muscles are surrounding the bones. How much gravity is permitted and with the organs. And so let all of that give information to your nervous system that would help it draw the conclusion, I am safe. And so it's here that I leave you today. I hope that you learned something about your spine, that you were able to move in a way that maybe you haven't moved in before so good for us and i encourage you to revisit this in the future so that you can continue to assess where am i at with all these different pieces of my spine and all the ways that my spine can move so thank you so much for joining today i'll see you here next week and as always if you want to support this work i'd love to see you over on our patreon page and so i'll put a link to that in the description below have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.